Welcome back to Broker Talk, your weekly residential real estate show, leaving you with something that helps you today. Whether we work together or not, you deserve to hear how the best agents in the business operate. Each week, we bring you a subject matter expert in their area for this interview. This week, we celebrate the new. Our guest today closed her the first deal of her career. <clears throat> Avani is new to real estate. She is not new to business success. And now she's not new to real estate success. Avani Sangvi is many things. Known by her friends as outgoing and fun, she's actually shy and reserved. We definitely need to connect her with Ashley Harwood from Move Over Extroverts. More on that later. All agents are not the same. There are good ones and bad ones, but all the good ones demonstrate the same characteristics during the transaction that just transpired that Avani just completed. Congratulations, Avani. Tell me two things you would do better with your next new listing. Hi, it's a pleasure uh, being on the show with you, Larry. I'm thrilled. Um, what We're I would thrilled. Yes. Um, what I would do better on my next listing is um, communicate. I think communication is key. It's very effective. Um, I don't think anything can be complete or smooth without communication. Right. Um, and uh, I also would want to uh, learn how to negotiate um, offers and how to deal with multiple offers. Well, that's, you know, as you head through the business, you will get that. The interesting thing at the very beginning of real estate, and I think you're still in that phase, is it feels like you're you're drinking from a, a, a fountain that's just gushing at you. But after a little bit, it's the same 20 things that you have to do over and over again um, that come on a checklist. And the only difference is you're dealing with different people in different towns with different houses and different emotional content. And uh, as the deal we, uh, by the way, it was uh, Avani and I uh, did the deal together. We co broke I represented the buyers and uh, she represented the listing. Um, everybody is thrilled, but um, there were, and I was saying this to Vani uh, during the transaction, we both learned some things and things didn't go as smoothly as they could. Communication was at the heart of it, wasn't it, Avani? Yes, it was. You know, on, on both sides, uh, things were said, but they didn't follow their normal correct protocol. And part of that is because you're new. Part of it is because I'm old. <laughs> and part of it is mostly because we didn't communicate. Um, uh, and it wasn't just us. It was us with our clients. But at the end, it it's changed. What, what changed as we got closer and closer for you? Um, you mean the deal? Yeah, for this deal. I think what changed is the client behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, what changed is, I think in this, what I understand from this whole thing is everything is teamwork. I don't think there's one person who plays more a more important role than the other. We right. all make it happen together. Yeah. Sometimes things are communicated, but because there is a fear of thinking whether I should be saying this or a right. fear of whether this is right or wrong. Whereas right. we know that everything boils down to honesty, confidentiality, and what we owe our clients. Yes. So I think again, again, it boils down to communication, but when people have a fear of not being honest, deals break or, you know, we do, there's no success because people have like are worried about what will happen if I say this or do this not realizing that it's okay to be honest and just get done with. Right. I, I completely agree with you. I don't think that there was an omission of truth. I think there was a fear of, of sharing where they were for fear that something would happen. And, you know, as agents, you do gain the trust of your clients and they do in fact, trust you until uh, because of a set of circumstances, they may not. Uh, 
and that might not have anything to do with you. It might be what I like to call a pre-existing condition, right. which is which is what I had on my side of, of the table. We had a family dynamic that was going on that came together to do this transaction, and they hadn't worked all of the issues out. You see this in divorces, you see it in estate sales and all of that, but mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of it until the very last week and a half where it, where it was Le legitimately crazy it was for a bit wasn't it yes <laughs> the, the important thing was we talked to each other and we didn't break confidentiality or loyalty but uh, i remember at one point i think it, you said do you want to be right or do you want to get the deal done and i think we agreed that that we want to get the deal done in the right way and the right way was everybody was was a little bit annoyed, <laughs> you know, and, and yet it was held together. Um, yeah. What are some of, the, some of the biggest challenges that you're facing right now? Is it technology? Is it uh, meeting people? I mean, I know that you're outgoing at times. I also know you have a quiet side. So I'm happy the outgoing one showed up today. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think uh, meeting people or technology has not been challenging. I think what is challenging is learning real estate, the knowledge that goes with it. Right. It's more challenging because I can talk to people, but if I don't know what I'm talking about, it becomes, you know, difficult. You want to make right. sure you only give the information you're supposed to and you know. Right, yeah. right. You but have to people, communicating with people has never been difficult for me. And, and that is a big step along the way. You also have, uh, uh, I mean, I, I said earlier that there really are, I'm making it simple, but I'm making it simple because it's true that there are 20 legal steps that you have to take. You can have a list of 72 things that you do and include this piece of marketing and that piece of marketing. And that's, a, that's all wonderful for, uh, to make your client feel like you're doing uh, most of this stuff, a lot of this stuff is automated now. And yes. you do have to remember it and you do have to do it. And it's good to have a, a, a step by step. Exactly. But, um, there is a timeline we all have to follow together as a team to make this happen. Right. Uh, speaking about teams, you don't work on a team. You're an independent, right? Independent, yes. Right, right. There's a big push right now for people to come together as teams and work. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I've, I have, I've worked with teams and been on teams, but I've always been better by, uh, with my own thing. Um, but I'm at a different point in my career than you are. You're going to build something and I'm, I'm just uh, loving all the referrals and it's a, it's a different part of the business uh, and it doesn't relate. But it does bring up a point. I do think that you should never, ever compare yourself to some other agent. They know more or they're a better agent or something like that. I think the confidence comes from what you know about it. More importantly, the questions you ask when you don't know who to ask, who to go towards. A lot of agents choosing their uh, their agency always looking for the best split or the best you know, um, uh, cap rate. Uh, and really what you should be looking for is the best people, Correct. the best mentors, because, yeah. it, you know, if you're on a team and you're working together, then you want to help that person get better. You don't want to hide your knowledge because you might compete. Right. I don't think people, if you and I went and deliver with with our different backgrounds and everything they would like one of us or the other and it would have absolutely nothing to do with our experience as we talk about it in that room Good. because the basic communication that you're having the first time with with buyers is mostly you want to find out what they want to do you know yeah. you can't they are interest yeah you, you can't do anything until they know what they're supposed, what you want, uh, what they want you to do. And then you talk about just that. Right. It's a very rewarding profession. It, it is. And it's, it, it's a very, there's a, a big downside. It takes a while 
to get it started. Uh, I know that you're out of the gate really, you know, really quickly. And that's, that's, uh, uh, it's because you're good and you will be good and you're going to be better. Um, but um, there's a process to this and your experiences that we learned here. I asked you for two things that you learned uh, and you gave us one, you learned communication. What's something else that you would do either overall or, or some incident that happened that we do better on the next one? Uh you had an open house, right? Right. Uh, uh, I had an. I had my next listing. Yes. Uh -huh. I had an open house. We. I had a multiple offer situation there as well. Uh, we accepted an offer. I think that was um, that was quite a bit of negotiation process that I was into. Um, I think I wouldn't say it was easy or quick or anything, but it was very very rewarding because the buyers. I knew the buyers, they had come to my open house the first time and the buyers are now my friends, but I was representing the seller in this transaction. Right. And the happiness that both the sides had after the offer acceptance was very, very rewarding. I, I right. felt really you know, satisfied with the deal. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I think it was a fair deal on both sides, you yeah. know, and, and usually a fair deal is both sides give up a little bit. They might have got it in a little bit, but really you want to have confidence that you're going to get to the close, yes. you know, and, and there's not going to be any um, uh, real estate BS <laughs> that can happen in between some real and, and some deserved and some not. There are legitimate reasons you find something uh, uh, egregious and you just have to talk about it and you negotiate that it works or it doesn't work. You know, yeah. um, so I never saw any of the marketing. This, uh, uh, my client um, did a lot of their own search and did a lot of their own open houses. I uh, know I didn't meet you until we made the offer. Um, and actually it was before we made the offer because I, I, I have made the mistake. This is one thing I learned a number of years ago. When you're really busy and things are crazy and you're running everywhere and you have a client that's ready and you know them and you know they're all ready to do it and you've been to enough houses with them and they you hear them say, I want this, this is one we want to do. And you know, time is of the essence right now that I have made the mistake of going and writing the offer. And then the next day or that day going and seeing the property because I don't want any of my clients to buy anything that I'd uh, haven't gone through, not that I'm the smartest guy, but I can see things uh, a lot of people don't see. And, uh, and I, I do a search that, that a lot of people don't do. Uh, but in this one, I saw the, uh, that's a big mistake <laughs> because we wrote the offer, the offer that got accepted. We spent the money, spent the time, did the inspection. And as soon as I walked in there, I knew my client was six foot two this was an old antique house and the ceiling was like six five so he was always up against and his wife was short but she was concerned about the husband and um and had i seen that i would have said that because they the place they lived had had really high ceilings and she had told me during the process that's what she liked and i just didn't check the dimensions and sometimes that stuff happens but uh that's the difference between good and great is don't make the same mistake, yes. <laughs> you know, and that mistake was see the price, see every property before you make an offer because yes. you're, you're responsible in the end. Yes. And you're right. I have put an offer. You brought it up. I have put an offer for a client without seeing the property. Yeah. It got accepted, but because yeah. there was an appraisal issue, we backed out. Yeah. So yeah. Well, our job is to help uh, buyers and sellers do what they want to do. And uh, along the way, financial issues, emotional issues, town issues, building permits, all different kinds of stuff um, does and will happen. And I think the important part is that you have to uh, know who to talk to, find people you can trust 
that you can call and say, hey, I just have a question, text, do you have a minute to talk, you know, something like that. Most good agents are really, uh, all the ones that I've met along the way are really uh, accepting of that, as long as you don't waste their time or ask their, their opinion about something and then don't do it. <laughs> you know, if you want somebody's opinion, don't disrespect them unless you can explain why you did something in it, you know, to that person. Right. Um, uh, along the way, uh, how are you going to, uh, uh, to learn different things that you'd like to learn, like multiple listing, uh, multiple offers, how you deal with them? Mm -hmm. I see in the in the market right now, it's kind of changed over the last couple of weeks um, uh, in the last month, certainly as inventory remains low, but the REOs bank owned properties are starting to come into the market. So you're going from completely finished and I'm going to bid over over because it's really nice to properties that have been beat up a little bit because the people couldn't pay their mortgage and they've lost the house and, and all that. So it's a different type of inventory and the market will ultimately change because they'll say, Oh, I'm paying less, even though ultimately you're probably paying more when you have to go in and do the repairs in the way that you want to. So it's a different kind of mindset, but the number of offers that are uh, coming in this week and last week are fewer than two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Absolutely. you're, you know, and, and you're not going a uh, hundred or 150, over asking, especially in yeah. some homes. Yes. Yeah. Um, when, one of the questions I ask if I'm bidding, if I'm a buyer's agent and I'm bidding on a property, I always ask if there's any couple that the listing agent knows that where the couple is six, seven, eight months pregnant, because I will not bid against those hormones, you know, because they want that property. They have to nest. I want them to have it, you know, and we've lost two properties with one of my clients before, because of that. And so I, I know. Just had, we just had two accepted offers. Both the clients, both the moms are to be moms, actually. Yeah. 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 There, you know. I if actually we, wrote a seller letter because my client wanted it so bad and they got it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's funny uh, how it happens and frustrating. I have a, a, a number of clients and a number of people wanting to go on to the market and, and still reading too much watching too much HGTV, you know, <laughs> thinking it's, it's all going to be wonderful. It's just a process, you know, yeah. and it's a process today. The other thing I also learned and going back to your question about, you know, we're talking about challenges and stuff like that. I think it's very important to get your team ready, meaning your resources ready. If somebody asks me, do you know a good lender who can give me the good interest rate? Do you know a good attorney? I think that is where I need to get my resources ready. I think I'm way better than what I was last year, but it's very important to interview these people because your buyers and sellers rely on you to give them these resources because they are like new, you know, they right. don't know anything with the process. So yeah. they rely on you to guide them and make sure they have, we all have the right team to yeah. make this happen. Yeah. And, and for buyer's agents, it's slightly different than with listing agents. With listing yeah. agents, you can go ahead and give your, your one favorite person because you know, you know it's going to get done. As a buyer's agent, you can't do that because it looks like you're, you're directing them. So you have to give them three. But it's always yeah. good to have more because in this business, uh, good people are around you and bad people are too. <laughs> so, you know, and, and people come to you uh, that, that aren't your people. And that's when you, you, you learn, boy, I wish I had my friend on this <laughs> or my colleague, I should say. Yeah. Um, but because you work, because it's an intimate process and there's a bunch of back and forth and there's a lot of things that change along the way. Um, I always tell people there's three, uh, oh, moments and one jump off the cliff moment. Um, you and I had pretty much all of that this last week and a half. Uh, if so only we important over here is we both kept calm. I think that is yeah the key word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I used a uh, 
a Saturday Night Live phrase that you're way too young to know, and I'm not going to repeat now, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it starts with Jane, you, um, you know, and it, it's, uh, that is never useful in real estate conversation is being antagonistic or, or being judgmental or being like, it's your fault. You know, when you start with all that kind of stuff, uh, you're already lost. You know, uh, the best is to uh, move away at that point. Right. And you are going to deal with all kinds of behaviors in this business. And that's where I use my psychology power. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You, uh, you do have a bachelor of arts, right? From, from yes. a good, uh, from a good school. So uh, were you in Austin? No, I was in Dallas. Dallas. Ah, uh, yeah. I that's actually. UT Arlington. Yeah. I, um, that's where I actually started my real estate business, Dallas, Fort Worth. Wow. And yeah, surprise, right? I was hired as a director of marketing for a real estate firm down there and went down and did videos and interviews and build up the business and all of that kind of thing. And it was a big blog years. And I had a blog that I wrote. Um, uh, I still write, uh, but um, at that time I was manic about it. And I thought if I was going to write about this, I should have some knowledge because I had to keep looking things up. So I went and got my license and realized that buying and selling is a lot more fun than blogging and marketing. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so, uh, but I like all of it, you know, and I think that's, uh, that's a point I've, I've made before, but I think your background as an agent and, and uh, the consumers that, that watch this show, they know your background is your secret sauce, your superpower. And, and uh, I think, for instance, of an accountant who, who uh, works with a builder, because builders are, are not account-like people, and that mix is like perfect for them. Um, I work with a, a certain type of person because I believe your home is your place and your home is where you make your memories, your house is what you buy as a uh, uh, buying something at the right price in the right neighborhood and all of that. That's really important because your, your home is also your equity and your, you know, uh, your, so uh, I'm not poo pooing that, but I think where you live, where you hang your hat, where you have your family, where you have your, I think that's important. And I tend to work with people who also think that's important. Yeah, you know, first time uh, home buyers are pretty much, when I talk to a lot of my clients, I'm like, this is how I was when I bought my condo in 2015. This is how yeah. I thought. Yeah. And I, like I said, a lot of behaviors. And I, I also realized another challenge that I faced is clients um, have a lot of other people involved in their decision yeah. to buy a house. And it's, it's the friends, it's family back home. It's somebody who's not even going to live on the property. My friend said this, my aunt said this, my uncle. So to deal with that kind of, um, I mean, to deal with those kind of clients is also an art trying to make them understand that that's fine, but you know, you are going to live in the property and you are going to pay for it. Right. Right. Well, the, that whole conversation about price is a, you're paying too much. That's, that's such an easy one. Um, but if you've been working with a client, they have a sense of what prices need to be because they're looking at it, you know, and, and what they can afford. Sadly, the cost of living in the United States right now is going up and up you know, and, and wages aren't staying with that. And that's, that's causing issues. I do not think we're going to be a bubble. Uh, there's nothing like that in, in uh, no indicators in that other than um, if a lot of people lose their job. If we go through another thing like we did uh, uh, during the pandemic where a lot of people lose their jobs, there are people that just hung on. There's people who didn't hang on. Those houses aren't on the market yet. Uh, they're, they're coming. Um, uh, I know several people who specialize in REO uh, properties and they're getting lined up. It's going to be a, a kind of a dash between now and the end of the year. Interest rates are going to keep going up and yes. that's going to affect uh, people. Um, some people will understand that the interest rates are still historically low, 
but those people who looked at three point something and didn't do or two point something and didn't do it are going to think I'm being robbed. And, you know, they're never going to so you're never going to be able to, you know, make them feel comfortable about it until, you know, 10 years from now, five years from now, when the equity has grown and, the, you know, they may have been able to switch out of that loan. Um, what are you hearing in terms of loans now? Um, have you been listening to people talking about uh, adjustable rate mortgages? I was just going to say that the arm loan, that is my re the recent offer that I accepted. Yeah, because they wanted to go for get a lower interest rate. Yeah. And decided to an arm loan for seven years. Yeah. yeah. And, and why that makes so much sense uh, that the banking industry is, is people do want lower rates. An adjustable rate, it, it, if it's seven years, that's a long period of time. People usually live in a home on average and averages are averages, exactly. nine years, nine years, but it's seven years. Sometime in the next seven years, if you can't refinance and go to something else, I understand interest rates are going back down next year um, after the, uh, in the summer and fall. Uh, we'll see if that's true. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I don't know, but uh, I, I'm hearing that as well. The other, the other product I've heard about recently is banks offering to finish with cash. So it's actually a loan, but the bank is paying cash. So it appears as if this, the buyer paid cash. So because it's more attractive looking versus actual cash the the seller gets actual cash like they always do anyway <laughs> uh, but there's there's a legal way in which they they mask that the lender masks that and it's usually they get they charge a percentage point on it so you pay an extra percentage point if that helps you win the bid for some people that makes perfect financial sense good enough. I try not to inject my opinion. Um, I try and wait for that because it's their house. It's yeah. their money. It's their life. It's their memories. I'm here to help. You know, right. uh, the job is to, to give them all the information so they can make their decision an informed yeah. decision. Yeah. And then get them to the closing table. <laughs> and get them to the but but the object is, uh, is not i mean yes the that's that's when we do get paid but the object after you've done it for a while the object isn't um uh, get these people to the closing table it's get them to the right closing table okay. because that's how you build the referrals you know yes. one one really happy client from to the next yeah. and then um uh and that's that's the joy I Mint still drive transactions from that one transaction. Right, right. I, I love driving around. I've been at it a while. I love driving around and say, I sold that house. I wonder how they're doing or just waving them in their front yard. You know, yeah. they know that, you know, I, I, it, it makes it feel like family and community. Yeah. And I think that's what real estate was in the very beginning. And even all the technology, how we get leads and how they get information has so drastically changed. But it really comes down to, I need someone who knows how to do this and, and someone I trust. Right. Real you know? estate, real relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just told that uh, the whole show will be shut down unless I plug in. There we go. <laughs> But we have, this has been awesome. We could go on far more than these 30 minutes that we've been here. Yeah. Uh, and surprise, you thought that you, you wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad uh, friendly Avani came today. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. Uh, go pick up your son. It was great talking to you. It was great uh, doing business with you. And, Same uh, my pleasure. And uh, we'll, uh, we will meet soon. <laughs> We'll talk soon. Yes. Stay tuned for next week when I'll bring you another exceptional guest to share with you their information. Thanks, Ivani Sangvi. It's a pleasure to have had you here. Same here. Thank you, Larry.